Hello and welcome back to baking. Today we'll continue exploring the desserts 365 book and the next recipe I think fits the season perfectly. We're gonna make easy Christmas gingerbread cookies. And I'll also show you how easy it is to make these adorable cookies with candy glass. So let's get started. And first let's rewind time by a few days. So now we're two days back and I just started preparing all the ingredients for the cookies. As I was measuring them, I had a couple of questions in my head regarding the conversions used in the book. So they provide measurements in cups, grams and pounds for each ingredient. However, what I noticed is that in some cases the grams don't align with the pounds. As an example, I noticed that for one ingredient it said 500 grams, but at the same time one pound but as we know that one pound is 454 grams so for this reason i've decided to stick to grams for measuring everything i've had the recipe for convenience but i'll post the original amounts in the description here i already prepared the softened butter at room temperature 125 grams 50 grams of brown sugar and 65 grams of granulated sugar the recipe called for 170 grams of light molasses, but I only had fancy molasses, which is very similar, it's just a bit stronger in flavor. However, do not use black strap molasses because it's a very different product. It is less sweet and might add bitterness to your cookies. Then I've got half of an egg, room temperature, 390 grams of all-purpose flour, half teaspoon of baking soda, half tablespoon of ground ginger, half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Full disclosure, I've accidentally added twice more spices, but the cookies were still really good. I just used the original amount instead of half in them. To make the dough, let's start from creaming the butter until it's lighter and softer. Then add both sugars and continue creaming until it's a little bit lighter again. Next, slowly pour in molasses while continue beating the mixture. After that, add the egg, but again, continue creaming until everything is well incorporated. Now scrape the sides of the bowl with a silicon spatula and then add dry ingredients one by one. So first I added the spices, ground cinnamon, ground cloves, ground ginger, then I've added salt, then I've added baking soda, and then I mixed everything together a little bit, and after that, I've added sifted all-purpose flour. Now, I try to mix it with a mixer, but I've realized that the mixture was a little bit too dry, so I've decided to flip it over on a silicon mat and then knead it a little bit with my hand. Then I divided the dough into two equal portions, and shaped them into discs and wrapped each disc in a plastic film. You need to refrigerate it for at least two hours, but considering that the dough was a little bit dry, I've decided to keep it to the next day because it will give flour more time to absorb the moisture. Now let's jump into the next day. First, I preheated the oven to 400F, 200C. Then I took the first portion of the dough from the fridge and the book suggests rolling it out between two pieces of parchment paper. But I always use my silicon mats for this. I find them more suitable for this task because they're thicker and they just don't wrinkle as easily. Roll the dough to about 6 mm for a slightly thicker and softer cookie or you can also make them a little bit thinner for a crispier texture. Then grab your favorite cookie cutters and make cookies. You can choose whatever shapes you like. I had a star, a Christmas tree, and a snowflake. I also found another set of snowflakes later on, so I'll use them for my next batch. Line a baking tray with a silicon mat. I prefer using a perforated mat to bake cookies because it helps prevent them from changing their shape during baking. Then take an offset spatula and carefully transfer the cookies to the tray and bake. If you roll them thicker, bake for about 9 to 10 minutes, and for the thinner cookies, bake them for about 8 minutes. They will start to become slightly darker, so keep an eye on them, because it's a pretty tricky thing to notice, as the dough is actually pretty dark. Then repeat the same process with the other portions of dough. Once done, collect all the scraps, re-roll them, and cut out more cookies. If at some point the dough becomes too warm and sticky, 
Just put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes, but do not add more flour. This will make cookies very tough. Try to avoid re-rolling the same dough more than two times. So I'm finally baked my last batch. Once you take the cookies out of the oven, keep them on a tray for a few minutes because they're very soft when they're hot. Then take an offset spatula and transfer them to a rack to cool down. And we're done with baking. Now let's move on to the fun part. Let's decorate. For the decoration, I've chosen some sprinkles and made the easiest royal icing by mixing two egg whites with 325 grams of icing sugar and 1 8 of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. If the consistency isn't right, since egg whites can vary, add a bit more icing sugar or a bit more egg white so that you reach that pourable but not too loose consistency. If you don't want to use raw eggs, then use 70 grams of pasteurized egg whites from a box. Here I use the piping bag with no tip just to draw some designs on the cookies and fill the areas, but then I added some sprinkles on top. Feel free to do whatever your artistic soul desires. So I've decorated a few cookies and moved on to the next idea. There was an idea I saw on Instagram where a cookie had some floating sprinkles inside and I really liked it and I really wanted to try that. So here I have some isomalt, which is a type of sugar that is less sweet than normal sugar and it doesn't change color when it's heated to its melting point, which is exactly what we want. Just be cautious with eating too much of it because it can cause an upset stomach. Here I have roughly a couple of tablespoons, but take whatever amount you need to decorate your cookies. I picked up a couple of cookies that have large windows in them and placed them on a silicon mat. I melted the isomalt on a slow to medium heat and added a tiny amount of blue food coloring. It wasn't exactly the blue shade I expected, but that's okay. Just mix it really well after that. Then I poured the isomalt into the windows, but I did not fill them completely because I wanted to leave some room for the floating sprinkles and also because eating a thick layer of isomalt isn't that great. Once it's set, I added sprinkles on one side and glued two cookies together with some royal icing. And there we go, a floating sprinkles cookie. And here are all the cookies I've made. There was a whole bunch that was left plain, but they were eaten super quickly without any enhancement. Overall, I was pretty happy with this recipe. It was really easy to follow and I didn't notice any challenges or issues besides that confusion with ingredients measurements. The cookies turned out really well and the dough was really easy to work with, so I definitely recommend this recipe to anyone who is looking for a simple gingerbread recipe. If I were to grade it, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 for taste, a 6 out of 10 for the ingredients accuracy, and an 8 out of 10 for the clarity of instructions. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Oh.